Welcome to the Quantiferon TB Gold Intube instructional video. The test may also be referred to as the QFT test. This video, which should be used in conjunction with the QFT package insert, will take you through the testing process and demonstrate how easy it is to run. Please refer to the package insert for your region. The test requires standard laboratory equipment. Therefore, almost any hospital or diagnostic laboratory can perform TB testing using the QFT kit. The test is an indirect test for M. tuberculosis infection and is intended as a diagnostic tool for use in conjunction with risk assessment, radiography and other medical and diagnostic evaluations. The QFT Gold Test consists of two major components, the blood collection tubes and the ELISA kit. The test is completed in four steps. These are blood collection, blood incubation, ELISA and data analysis. Generally, the clinic only performs the blood collection step. In some cases, they may also perform the incubation step Samples prior to or after incubation are then shipped to the laboratory. If the laboratory receives unincubated samples, the laboratory performs the incubation step first, followed by the QFT, ELISA and data analysis steps. As a clinician, you may be interested only in the steps involving blood collection and incubation of tubes prior to shipment to the laboratory. The blood collection process is performed in the clinic. Following blood draw, the clinic has the option to either incubate or not incubate the samples on site. The samples are then shipped to the laboratory for QFT, ELISA and data analysis. Blood collection tubes are packaged in different formats that are specific to different regions. Tubes may be available as 50 tubes each, 100 tubes, dispenser packs and single patient packs. Also available are high altitude tubes. Immediately prior to blood collection, ensure the QFT blood collection tubes are between 17 and 25 degrees Celsius or 63 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit. The QFT system uses specialised blood collection tubes that contain antigens or controls. Each test includes three QFT blood collection tubes for each individual being tested. The nil tube with a grey cap is the negative control. The TB antigen tube with a red cap is coated with TB specific antigens and the mitogen tube with a purple cap is the positive control. Each tube is manufactured to draw 1 milliliter of blood and performs optimally within the range of 0.8 to 1.2 milliliters. The black mark on the label indicates the 1 milliliter fill volume. Under or overfilling the tubes may lead to erroneous results. There is no specific order required for blood collection. However, a commonly used fill order is nil, TB antigen, followed by mitogen. Collection and individual identification details are to be recorded on each of the tubes. Standard blood handling precautions should apply during the blood collection process. Collect 1 milliliter of blood via standard venipuncture directly into each of the blood collection tubes. It is important to note that the QFT tubes draw blood relatively slowly. The vacuum in the tubes is such that the tubes will draw only 1 milliliter of blood. Keep the tube on the needle for 2 to 3 seconds once the tube appears to have completely filled to ensure the correct volume is drawn. Collection can be either by a straight needle or butterfly collection set.
If a butterfly needle is being used to collect blood, a separate purge tube should be used first to ensure that the butterfly tubing is filled with blood. This is to compensate for the small vacuum in the QFT tubes, hence ensuring that the initial QFT tube will draw the correct volume. The inner walls of the blood collection tubes are coated with heparin and stimulation antigens. It is important that these dried components are thoroughly mixed into the blood immediately following collection. This is achieved by shaking the tubes up and down 10 times as demonstrated here. Proper shaking will ensure that the entire inner surface of the tube is coated with blood and frothing of the blood should be expected. Over-energetic shaking of the tubes can result in the gel dislodging and mixing into the blood. This can result in erroneous results and must be avoided. Until the incubation stage, tubes must be maintained within 17 to 27 degrees Celsius or 63 to 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Use or storage of filled tubes at temperatures outside this range may cause erroneous results. In the clinic, it will be necessary for you to know the preferences of your laboratory with regard to incubation of the tubes. Does your testing facility prefer to receive unincubated samples or incubated samples? If your testing facility prefers unincubated samples, after shaking and prior to incubation, maintain tubes within 17 to 27 degrees Celsius or 63 to 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Do not refrigerate the tubes or store on ice. Multiple samples can be batched at this time and stored for up to 16 hours before the incubation step. Although incubation as soon as possible after blood collection is preferable. For unincubated tubes, you have up to 16 hours for the tubes to be delivered to the laboratory before incubation must begin. If your testing facility prefers incubated samples, any standard 37 degrees Celsius incubator can be used. The incubator does not require carbon dioxide or humidification. The tubes must now be placed upright in a 37 degrees Celsius or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit incubator as soon as possible, but at the latest within 16 hours of collection. If there is a delay between the blood collection step and the incubation step, Remixing of the tubes by inverting 10 times must be performed. This is to ensure a redistribution of the lymphocytes within the blood. If there are a large number of samples, this mixing can be performed on a rack of tubes all at once. This incubation should continue for 16 to 24 hours and is usually performed overnight. Following the incubation, the blood collection tubes can be held between 4 and 27 degrees Celsius or 40 and 81 degrees Fahrenheit for up to three days. Therefore, after completion of incubation, you have up to three days to transfer samples to the laboratory for plasma testing using the QFT ELISA.